Lissa Productions. So in lab two, we're going to be learning how to use various pieces of equipment that we'll use throughout the rest of the semester. We have here our function generator, which generates output voltages that we'll use, and our digital oscilloscope that we'll use to t record our data, make measurements of it. Start with the function generator. It's got a bunch of power on here. We can set the frequency. We can set the amplitude. We'll look at that in a second. It's got an output here. There's a special, basically it's just a cable. It's a BNC connector on one end, which plugs in here. And we hook these other two up to wherever we're going to measure. Up here, this is a sink out. We probably won't be using that during this semester. We'll just be using this output here. So that gets us our output. The digital oscilloscope has two signal inputs an external trigger. We could actually hook these two together if we wanted to use the sink out with the external trigger. It has what are called scope probes. For the function generator, this is essentially just a wire. The scope probe, if you look at it, it has capacitance and resistance in it. It, it, has, it's, it has electrical components in it. It's not just a wire. So when we plug it in here, and then we use these little clip here to measure things and the little alligator clip here, this should not be plugged into the function generator. The function generator cable should not be plugged into the scope. If you do that, who knows what you're measuring. Something else to pay attention to on the scope probes, you may be able to see them here. There's a little switch that says times one or times 10. You want them to be on times one. And when we go into channel one, it says voltage times one on the probe there. We want to make sure it says times one. To measure these when we hook things up, we want to make sure that all of the grounds are hooked together, so all these little black things should somehow be hooked together in your circuit. And we can put the scope probe across there to measure things. And then we see some signal on the scope there. So let's, let's move in a little more closely and look at a lot of the functions of this. So as, as we said before, we're going to be playing with equipment in this lab. We start with the function generator here. I've got the output hooked up in the output. It's on high Z. That's important. You can read about it in the lab. If it's not on high Z, it could be on the 50 ohm setting. You can see 50 ohms there. You don't want that. You'll be off by a factor of two in your measurement. So make sure that you have it on high Z. It's right now we can measure its frequency. So it's set up for one kilohertz right now. I can set it to be five kilohertz or 18 kilohertz or whatever. Let me go back to one kilohertz. The amplitude, this is 5 volts peak to peak. I can go, say, 2 volts RMS, 8 volts peak to peak. I can set the various amplitudes there. There's also an offset, which adds a DC level to it. We're going to make sure that's set to 0 here. And there are different types of function outputs. I've got a sine wave right now, and we can see the sine wave over here on the scope. I can go to a square wave. You can see the square wave, the triangle wave, sawtooth and it'll put out noise if you want, which isn't too useful to us. So that's the function generator. So right now it's set out to have a five volt peak to peak, one kilohertz signal, and let's go over to the oscilloscope and see what we have here. Assuming I didn't know where it was, I can press this auto set button and that will locate this, the trace for me. So that comes and finds it here. I can adjust the vertical scale here to make it fill more or less of the screen. You can adjust the time scale here to spread it out or to make it tighter together. And I can move it up and down with this knob here. You'll also notice there's a small arrow there on the side. That's the trigger. I'm going to go to the trigger menu. It is triggering on source channel 1 here. And I can adjust the level of that arrow. And that basically tells the scope where to take a snapshot. So that may be something you want to do. The scope also has measurement functions, so I can go into measure. And it's got little functions here. So at channel 1 frequency, I can go in. It's channel 1 type frequency. Let me change it to peak to peak voltage. And then I can go. So now it's measuring the peak to peak voltage. This one is set up to measure the mean. That one's set up to measure something on channel 2. There are a bunch of different measurement functions I can do. I can also bring up cursors. So I've got cursors, so that's the type amplitude. So that's up, down. Put it on to source channel 1. 
And now you see my cursor there. There's the upper cursor. I'm going to adjust it to some height there. I'm going to go to the lower cursor and I'm going to bring it there and it now tells me the difference between those. I can also go back and measure time type cursors so now they're left and right. So now I go to the first one. I can say put it at the peak of that wave there. Go to the second one, put it at the peak, the next peak, and it measures the time distance difference between those two. A lot of things to play with on this scope. One last thing we're going to look at is we can actually record data to a memory stick. So I'm going to plug a memory stick in there. It's going to take a second to recognize it. There it's got it. And now I am going to press the Save Recall button. There are a bunch of different things I can do. This is Save Waveform to a file. I need to make sure it's doing channel 1. And it's writing it to this particular file. That's a .csv file, which is something Excel can read. You may also want to recall things, save all. You may want to save an image of this. This will save it as a JPEG. You can save the, the setup of the scope, and you can save various things. And here's the, the Excel file. So that's useful to do. We'll be using that in a more in another lab. But it's useful to be able to save things onto a scope and then look at them on your computer. So essentially, this lab is just playing with this equipment. There's a lot of things to do. You want to play with it a lot. So this lab has been learning how to use the function generator and the digital oscilloscope, two pieces of equipment they're going to use for the rest of the semester. Hopefully you played with this, you've become familiar with it, you've learned a lot of the functionality of this, and we did a so-called frequency response measurement of the R2R ladder that we did in lab one. Frequency response measurement, as we, as we will see, is one of the basic measurements we'll make this semester. It's measuring the output voltage versus the input voltage across a wide range of frequencies, and also the phase difference between the input and output voltage across a wide range of frequencies. And we'll do that with the measurement functions on this scope. The main thing of this lab is just to play with this equipment, learn how to use it so you're familiar with it. And when you start doing things in the next lab where we're measuring things, this will be very easy to use, hopefully.